Temptation is something that each and every one of us will face. Christ warned us about temptation. It's a fight between our fleshy urges and our spirit. Who wins? That's up to us to decide. That's the ultimate fight of free will and what you use it for. Just look around you. More than 95% of men today are controlled by their urges. To the point that it has became their routine, a lifestyle, a habit. For one, it's like having alcohol. For another, it's gambling. It may seem like you are trapped in an everlasting cycle. You may think it's hopeless to even try to quit it. This, my friends, is the biggest lie ever told by the devil. The Bible says that devil is the father of lies. He is the king of lying and creating illusions. Oftentimes, when you get that small voice in your head to just quit, because it's not worth trying to fight your temptations is nothing more than an illusion. In one of our other videos, we discussed the life of Joseph and how he was tempted day after day. Just like Joseph, sins may be calling you every other day, or maybe every second, like how Potiphar's wife called Joseph, but he refused. However, there comes a day when an old addiction, problem, or sin tries to corner you. The Bible says that she caught Joseph by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. This is a prime example of how sin will try to corner you. It will seem as though you have no choice but to give in at this point. But here's where you need to be aware of how evil works. Remember, the devil is crafty. He will entice you by first planting seed in your mind. This may be in the form of checking out a girl that you find arousing, looking at her for too long when you know that this could make you sin. But you look anyway. You try to push the boundary to see how long you can last without sinning. Remember, brother, the devil has already planting his seeds. You may think you have not relapsed, and you are still in the safe. But remember, even entertaining the thought of sin is a relapse. He wants you to start thinking about it, and he is successful in planting seeds in minds. If he successfully lets you think about or commit the sin under pretense, he will present the sin to you on a plate every day. So what do you do when temptation reaches you, when it corners you and forces you to decide? 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says, Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So the first step is to control your imagination. Instead of trying to stop imaging something, focus on imagining something in particular. For example, if I told you to stop thinking about a white elephant, it's very likely that is exactly what you will end up doing. So if you want to stop imaging a white elephant, simply imagine something in particular, such as a yellow car or someone running. Now that you have stopped imaging about that particular sin, you must take it captivate and put it under the obedience of Christ. This step is simple. Bring to your memory the promise of Christ, why he died for you, the purpose of his blood. If we go back to Joseph, remember what he did. As soon the woman took hold of him, he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. This is what it means to flee from sexual immorality. The word flee means to run away from a place or any dangerous situation. Now, what did Joseph do? He ran away from Potiphar's wife and hence, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is the only sin that you don't fight against. Listen to that again. You are not told to fight sexual immorality. You are told to run away from it, to flee from that situation you need the strength of God and the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, people think resisting temptation means closing their eyes and using their entire willpower and hope. That is entirely wrong and 100% you are setting yourself up for failure. Learn to be practical. Why? Because the flesh is weak and closer to sin. We, as new believers, must crucify our flesh by resisting, fleeing, and running away from sinful desires. Interestingly, the Bible says in John chapter chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will flee from you when you begin to resist the devil. So when the Bible says flee from sin, 
It means to run away from sin and run straight to God. When you run towards God, it's a territory where all urges and temptations dismantle. They simple don't want to follow you there. It's impossible. Why? Because darkness cannot have any part in light. And if you are saying no to the devil and yes to God, the devil has no place in your life. He has no room to cover. Therefore, brothers, put on the full armor of God so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. By the way, don't forget to show some love. Tap that subscribe button and hit like for the algorithm. To see the next best way to level up as a man, watch these videos here.